Hey, this is Wes, and we're in Belfast, Ireland at a club called Twitch, and I'm on tour with Corn right now, and I think we're here to talk to you about the damages. Um, I, uh, well, let me see. I started playing guitar at 15, and about a few years later, 20-something, I started a band called Head P.E., and we were on Jive Records. And uh, we put out a few records uh, together. I started that band with uh, Jared Shane. And uh, we toured around the world for about 10 years. And uh, did all sorts of stuff. Toured with Korn and Incubus and uh, Deftones and Slipknot. I mean, just so many bands. Uh, and then after that, um, when that time was done, I, I left. And uh, now I've been playing with uh, Korn as their touring guitar player. Um, the thing that fascinates me about being a musician or being into music is I get super inspired by hearing songs that I love and uh, people who are creating new sounds and new beats and new styles and that always draws me into music and makes me want to explore it more deeply. Uh, the reason I play guitar is from the beginning when I heard Eddie Van Halen and Iron Maiden and Dead Kennedys and all these kinds of bands I listened to. Um, I just always would hear the guitar and the things that they were playing, the high notes, and I always wanted to learn how to do the, make that sound. It was just always the instrument that I, my ear caught the most. Yeah, the music I listened to as a kid, I mean it changed. I was brought up on classical music because my grandmother played classical, my grandfather did, and then my brother uh, would listen to things like, uh, you know, people like Richie Blackmore and Deep Purple, and it kind of got my ear a little bit, but then uh, finally, like I said, uh, when I heard Dead Kennedys and even old B-52s, it was really weird twangy guitar, uh, like their early, early albums, and. Uh, even like the Oingo Boingo, Agent Orange, Iron Maiden, Van Halen, all those things got me really excited about music. The Vandals. Um, I think when bands in this day and age uh, replace singers like Journey did it and Queen was going to do it, you know, in the old older days, 80s and 90s, you knew bands so well, if they changed a member like Kiss, you're like, oh, it's never going to be the same. And because in this sense, music is still new, bands have only been around 20, 30 years, so you're finding out that like, wow, you can get somebody who sounds pretty good and sing a Journey song or uh, whatever, um, Queen. Um, and as a fan, of course, we'd like to have it be Fred and Mercury up there, but wow, for me, I never got to see Queen. So to go see the rest of the band or The Doors with uh, Ian Ashbury from The Cult, to get to hear that music live uh, as close as you can get it to the original, which it isn't the same, but it's still an amazing opportunity for the fans. And I have to think that like Freddie Mercury up there, on some level, has to be happy that his music and his brothers in the band get to still perform that music for people and let them hear it live because that's what it's about. You want to take it to the stage and I think it's a great thing. As long as you can do it with some sort of integrity and I, I certainly think that they would do that. Alright, The Damages are a new band that uh, is Nate Lawler from Death on Wednesday and myself formed it, Wes Gear. And uh, we're fusing a lot of Im a lot of different uh, styles. I think uh, Nate's voice it uh, reminds me sometimes of Glenn Danzig in the Misfit days. Sometimes he reminds me of Scott Weiland, and sometimes he'll remind me of uh, um, Morrissey. Even uh, he also sometimes sounds like uh, he has a bit of like a '50s crooner in there. He's a very interesting voice, very different. Um, and he was doing more punk stuff. Uh, Maybe some people would even call it pop punk um, with Death on Wednesday, but what we're doing now is more, it's kind of like Misfits with a dash of Radiohead, a little bit of Led Zeppelin. We use electronic elements like bands like The Killers and Phoenix and Depeche Mode use. We sprinkle that on there, um, but it has a lot of different elements in there. The 
we started this project is Nate and I have been friends a long time and we just wrote a couple songs for fun and uh, we just liked how they came out they just felt good and then I really felt inspired when I heard Nate's voice um, having heard his old project I just kind of heard his voice and the same way in Head PE when I got together with Jared I kind of wanted to create the sound that would support his voice and I kind of want to do the same thing with Nate I have this vision for where we can take him musically and make our own sound together because I write music and he's obviously a songwriter and so together I think we have a good chemistry. You'll be able to hear some snippets of songs coming up in the next few weeks uh, in April. Um, we'll start dropping little snippets out there. Um, something the damages want to do um, because the whole industry is entirely different from how it used to be. It used to be people make a CD and you do interviews and you wait for the big release. Well, we want to include um, people who are interested in every step of the process from when we're putting the band together, when we put out our first demos. We're not going to make you wait until the official record comes out, but we're going to include you in the process of our development from the very beginning. And so the first thing we're going to put out is our home demos that we recorded in our home studio. Uh, and that's what will be coming out in April. Hey, the most difficult thing for bands to do is to get noticed because there's so much good music. I sit on Spotify, which is an app I love, and I can just explore endless, endless music. There's so much of it. Um, in the days of my last band, I keep referring to Head PE in like 1994, around then. Um, there was music, but not so much. It, you could, we made a demo of a punk rock song with 808s dropping on a cassette tape, and it was enough to excite people. Now, with so much music and so many creative people out there, that's really the challenge. And so that's why we're starting now putting the word out about what we have going on, you know? is a good question. Let's see. I would love to be a support act for uh, Chino's Project Crosses. That would be cool. Um, I don't think Killers are around anymore. Um, I don't know. That is a really good question. It would be fun to if The Cure... <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. There's so many great bands out there I'd love to open up with. But our stuff, our sound is more indie. Um, it has like very like beats that you know girls could dance to, although it's still heavy in rock. Um, it's hard to explain the niche it fills, but I, I, there's a lot of bands we would play with. It wouldn't be heavy metal bands, though. The music scene in America, I mean... It really takes, you have to have great venues for bands to play at and you have to have great bands to play in those venues so people come to the venues and the venues can do all right with their business and everything. So I know that places like Austin and occasionally in Los Angeles there's bands like uh, my friends Gemini Syndrome and uh, things like that who do well. Um, there's a new band I just produced called Star Off Machine, also known as Stoffma. Uh, they're coming out with a record and so there's a few little spots in LA and I know New York um, that have great artists still coming out. Um, we, um, Korn and Head PE, my old band, uh, we played in Huntington Beach. There's a lot of clubs to play back in uh, those days but now not so much now the scene's kind of shifted back up to LA. Uh, actually the last record I bought was uh, for the um, movie soundtrack that Mike Shinoda did for Linkin Park. I listened to a couple of the snippets and myself uh, I like to produce music as well although I haven't had the success of course that Mike Shinoda's had but um, I like to listen to uh, what he's doing because it's at a very high level so that's I just bought that last night. Yeah, um, You can follow us um, on Twitter at the damages uh, with an S on the end the damages um, and what we're looking for is people who help us spread the word on Twitter and uh, those are going to be people that are on our initial street team that will definitely take care from the very beginning the OG fans will be remembered I pull them out on a nice re report and you'll be our soldier soldiers in the trenches and we want to use you to get feedback on uh, what we're doing 
And uh, thank you for watching and supporting music. And please buy a CD and go out and see a show so we can keep music alive.